Welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to tell you about how I tried to paint nine tigers in one week. So you might be wondering why I would be so crazy as to try to paint nine paintings in one week. Well, I'm glad you asked because in the Milan Art Institute Mastery Program, which is the year long art program that I am in, we have to do a thing called production week, which means that we are producing eight to 10 paintings in one week. So I decided to do nine paintings, basically three circles, three squares, and three rectangles. So as you can see in these first couple of videos, I start out all of my paintings by projecting them onto the canvas. For me, this is just the easiest way to get my proportions right. And since I'm trying to get done nine paintings in one week, I need to get those pro I need to get those proportions correct as quickly as possible. So this is the way to do it. I project each of my sources onto the canvases and I just get to work tracing them out. And I know there's a lot of people who think using projector is cheating, but I say go for it, especially if you're trying to produce a lot of artwork in a short amount of time. <laughs> and I here, obviously, I'm trying to make nine paintings um, in one week and I keep saying that over and over, but it's true. So. My advice about using projectors is use them only if you already know how to draw. If you already know how to get proportions right, feel free to pull that projector out. And the next step in my process is to spray on a fixative over top of all my drawings. Because if you don't seal in those pencil drawings, they're going to smear as soon as you add any sort of water-based paint on top of them. So I go through and spray each of them with that fixative. And the next step is I went ahead and attached a layer of tissue paper in the back of each of my paintings. This is my favorite way to create texture and a little pop of color behind each of my paintings. I just love the way that you can kind of get a crackly effect with the tissue paper. And I might make a whole video about how I attach the tissue paper, but here you can just kind of see, I brush on a layer of the gel medium, gel gloss medium. And then I put the tissue paper on top and I purposely crinkle it together because I really like to have the crackly texture in the back of my paintings. So all in the first day that I was attempting to do these paintings, I did the sketching of the projected source and the tissue paper layer all in one day. So that was a pretty good start in my mind. Like, okay, I am prepared, you know, to move on to the next step. That's a lot to get done in one day on nine different paintings. Super stoked as I moved into the next day. So the next morning I went in with what is called molding paste. I've also heard it called modeling paste. I think they're the same thing. Let me know if you know the difference in the comments. But I like to add even more texture to my paintings. So I take a stencil and I layer that molding paste on top and I peel the stencil off. So you end up with a really cool patterned texture. One of my favorite parts to add on there. And then I also go ahead and drag that molding paste over the tissue paper. It just helps solidify that crackly texture that I love so much. So that way it really shows through when I start to add the acrylic. <laughs> so after all of that texture is dry, I go through and actually start marking out each of the tigers in an acrylic paint marker. I love these acrylic markers. Um, there's different brands you can use. I'll list those in the description. But I like to make sure that I have each of these tigers mapped out in, a, in this dark paint marker so that way when I go in and add my layers of acrylic and acrylic inks which is what I do next I can still see that tiger layer underneath and it will speed up the process because I won't lose the proportions that I already mapped out with the projector so I go through and just map out all the stripes and eyes and important parts that I don't want to lose when I start to add the acrylic on top and for me I like that this immediately adds dark contrast to my artwork so I'm not fighting to get those dark spots as much when I start adding acrylic and honestly who doesn't love a bit of tracing <laughs> with marker to speed up the process especially when you're trying to get done nine pieces in one week like anything we can do to speed up the process we're gonna do it And 
and here they all are with that marker and good start. Very good start to these tiger paintings. So next I like to go in with acrylic inks. These are high flow acrylic inks from Golden and I like to basically first wet the canvas down with water. I just spray the canvas basically with a spray bottle and then I drip the acrylic inks on top and it's so much fun to see how they spread out and drip around and you really have pretty little control when you're doing these acrylic ink washes and that's part of what I love so much about it because I'm kind of a control freak in person <laughs> so to make this step like easier of like adding color right away I can just let go of the pressure and add as much color as I want and let go of that need to control how it looks because even though it's a hot mess <laughs> after I finish these acrylic oils or acrylic inks I know that I can pull it back together with some brush marks and blocking in in the next step. So I kind of just let my freak flag fly when I'm doing these acrylic inks and whatever goes, goes, you know. I see what I have as far as like colors in my sources and I just, you know, start dripping ink all over and try to kind of emulate those different colors in my sources. And it's fun. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the process. And as you can see, as you look at all these paintings in the ink phase they're pretty messy and like I said that's why I like it so you know in my opinion you have to have your paintings get messy and ugly before you can make them get pretty that's just my take <laughs> so in the next couple of days and this part honestly is where things start to drag a little bit right like I got those first couple steps done in two days easy the blocking out in acrylics and detailing out in acrylics, it takes a bit longer, especially when you have nine different tigers to map out. So this part, <laughs> this part is where I started to fall behind. I'm just being honest, just being 100% honest. I started to fall behind a little bit. I basically what I did was one day I tried to block out every single painting, each tiger. And I basically, I think I got four done in one day, blocked in and then four the next day and four or five the next day. It took me two or three days to block these out, right? And so at that point I'm like, oh shit, I'm a little behind. And then I had to take a couple more days on top of that to add the details on top of what I've already blocked in, right? Like I want these tigers to look semi-realistic. So <laughs> that takes time and that's okay. So I took the time, blocked them all in, detailed them all out, and that took probably five days total. So at that point I had hit a week. So this is when I hit halfway and I'll let my past self explain that to you. <laughs> so I'd say at this point in the process, I'm probably about halfway done with the production week. I have everything blocked in as you can see, but I just kind of need to go through and flush out more details. I'm also trying to decide if I should add a layer of oils at the end or not, just to kind of add more depth and vibrancy to the colors, which will add more time to the process. And as you know, I'm trying to finish this in a week, but I'm kind of already hitting a week, not going to lie. Um, I started this project probably last Tuesday, and it's Monday the next week. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm hitting a point, but it's okay if it takes me a little bit longer. Um, there really is no rush, it's just kind of is the concept of it, but I'm, I'm really hoping to finish them by the end of this week, by Friday at the latest. So um, yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I did decide to add a layer of oils. I couldn't help myself. A layer of oils just makes things so much more vibrant in the end and just pop more, so I did add the oils. <laughs>
couple of shots are great because it shows you how I added even more texture. I like to go in with the, um, they're little like mixed media crayons, acrylic crayons. Uh, I'll link those down below as well, but basically I use those to add like a fun like organic texture to the moon and to the tissue paper texture I already have. And I also took acrylic markers and started to map out the lines that I had created with modeling paste earlier. As you can see here, I finally started going with the oils on top of the acrylics that I had already done. Like I said, this just adds the vibrancy that I want in my paintings. I just like the way the oils make your paintings glow. Acrylic just doesn't do it for me. You gotta add that layer of oils. So I went in and did that. I basically will go through and make the highlights even brighter and the darks even darker so I get more contrast and I'm mapping out where my cool tones are gonna go that are gonna push back in the background or my warm tones are gonna go, which will pop forward. And that's something they teach you at the Milan Art Institute. Not something to go into detail here, but it makes the painting just look 10 times better. So even though it did take me longer, it was worth it. Okay, this is the last day. It has to be, okay? I've been working on these paintings for just under two weeks and I've about had it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, they're turning out amazing. I'm in love with them. I just think that they are almost there. Basically, this should be it. All they need, all they need is whiskers and to detail out the moon and stars in each of them. And that should be it, okay? It has to be it because these paintings have been consuming me for the past two weeks and there was only supposed to take one week but hey I'm only human and I'm doing my best and let's just crank it out okay so as you can see I you know had hit the almost two week mark and I just decided to just push through as fast as I could and in this stage I went through and added a bunch of little tiny stars in each of my paintings my original sources had galaxies in the background so I wanted to emulate that as much as I possibly could so I went through and started adding those stars I made the moons a bit brighter I just really wanted to add some details that made this painting pop I also am going to go through and add whiskers because you know tigers gotta have their whiskers <laughs> Now I'm going to reflect on the process and like what I would have done differently if I had the chance. So as you all know at this point, it took me longer than a week to finish the nine paintings. Don't come for me, okay? It just, it took longer and I'm a human and that's fine. I need to learn from this experience because let's say I need to make nine paintings in a week in the future. I need to know what to do differently in the future. So if I were to do this again in the future, I would make my images much simpler. I wouldn't have created a source for each one. I maybe would have just done the galaxy or just done the tiger. I probably would make them a bit smaller and not as detailed as these ones. These actually are pretty realistic and pretty fleshed out. And I don't think that needed to be the case. I might even do drawings next time, like simpler, pieces on paper where it's like less paint and less time and less texture and less just consuming like I have a problem where when I do something I like to go 110% I don't know how to take it back a notch so in the future when I do this again because I am going to be a full-time artist that means I will have more production weeks in the future I'll make them simpler okay and that's and that's fine all in all though, I am really excited about how these paintings turned out. They're really magical and vibrant and I love how each of the tigers looks. Like they have like the sense of awe and wonder and that like mystic quality that I go for in my work. And I'm proud of myself for creating nine paintings. Even if it did take me two weeks, like I still made nine full paintings. That's super exciting because in the past it would have taken me at least, I don't know, probably three months to create nine paintings. Like one painting a month was normal for me. And now I'm easily creating nine paintings in two 
weeks. Um, my regular pace now is two paintings a week and that's really exciting. And it's so nice to step back and take a look at all of them and know that I made all of these. Long story short, if you're interested in becoming a full-time artist and you're curious about the program I'm taking, I'm at the Milan Art Institute Mastery Program. I'm basically in the portfolio section of the program. If you're curious about that program and want to paint like a mad woman like I've been doing <laughs> and wondering how you get to this step, you can check out my other reviews of the Milan Art Institute. I have one about the oil and drawing section and one about mixed media. I will be revealing my full portfolio, hopefully in the next month or two. I still have 12 more pieces to do, but I'll be revealing that soon. So subscribe if you want to see that video. I'm also thinking about doing a video where I show you how I create my sources and procreate because I feel like that's really valuable and has helped me as a painter because if I can see what the finished product will look like before I start painting, I feel more confident going into the painting. But I hope you enjoyed watching this crazy process of me trying to create nine paintings in one week quote unquote, maybe two weeks. And yeah, I hope you like, please leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more of my art and follow my journey to becoming a full-time artist. And yeah, thank you. Just thank you for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.